Yo, Dan VR. Today I'm gonna be trying out a progression video. The first I've ever done, or at least the first series I'll complete. I'm not gonna lie, I did a few in the past and I just wasn't feeling it. Today I'm gonna be doing a sort of beginner's guide almost, like a beginner friendly progression. It's gonna be a really simple build, just a standard like no attunement build you might have seen in verse one. This not only is gonna be easy to make so the average player can follow along, and they'll be able to sort of explore the map, especially new players. But they'll also be able to sort of enjoy PvP. This is a somewhat viable build, so you'll be able to go into ganks or the Chime of Conflict and not immediately just get completely washed. So, right off the rip, <coughs> spawning at Etrus, what I'm going to actually want to do is get all of my training items that I'll need for the progression. When you come into the inn here... And you talk to Trenty, if you ask for the how can I earn some money, spare cash, he'll give you 25 notes. And that makes it a little easier. So I already spawned with the dumbbell. I'm going to need uh, oh, nothing in here. I need to get prayer beads and I need to get the training boulder. If you come into the, if you come to like the tree here in the middle of the map, you can also get a ring from this guy. You just spam through the dialogue essentially. So you can sell this at the Antiquarium for a little extra notes. Sometimes, if it's like a, a starred variant, it'll give you like a full 25 and you'll be able to get a decent amount for like your training items. Uh, sometimes you just kind of get a shitty one and it is what it is. So I'll run in here and sell that real quick. 67 notes, whatever. So I get the prayer beads and then the boulder. So it should give me everything I need to actually do the progression here. For a lot of people first starting out, it's going to seem counterintuitive. But instead of trying to like learn the game by going straight to uh, Bandit Island, like the quest up here is going to suggest, I would say that the first thing you should do is just go and start the trial of one. Now, you're not going to win the first time. You're probably not going to win the first couple times. But by doing this trial of one over and over, you're going to have a general understanding of how to fight the most common monsters in the game. And when you finish off the trial of one, you do come out and start the rest of your progression at... Oh. Uh, don't, uh, don't mind me, gents. I'm just going to... Ah, fuck, there's no bag. Uh... Hey! Alright, so uh, I actually beat him off screen. I 100 would him without any difficulty whatsoever. But I, I'm not going to include it in the video because I feel I'd be a little disrespectful. So once you built your boat from uh, the like docksmith there, you are going to make your way to Minatirsa where you can find the Trial of One. All right, so this is the trial of one sort of starting area and you just walk towards the door to begin it You do have to be level one to actually Go into the trial if you're anything above power one It will just like bounce you off the door But this is a really good way to just learn the game as well as kind of get a head start on the progression Once you've gotten about halfway through it I believe it's after you fight the threshers you just like you get the opportunity to spawn here every time you make a new slot so instead of having to walk back, you straight up just get to start here. Alright, so we're done with trial. I ended up getting to 90 fortitude, 36 strength. Uh, if you haven't already unbound your fortitude, you will have to go to the Eastern Luminate to do that. But there are a ton of videos that can help you with it. All you've got to do is get to 75 fortitude and then talk to an NPC. 
and then it unlocks it for all of your slots and all future characters. It, it just saves time, it's like a quality of life thing, so you don't have to run back. After the trial, we did sail to Arisia. You'll have that on your like quest guide here. So <coughs> it won't be hard to <coughs> hard to find. Oh my god, sorry. I think I have uh, I think I have lung cancer. Cause this cough is not going away. It is not looking good. But instead of the uh, general quest line that we're gonna do, instead we're actually going to skip all of that and we're going to go straight up to Upper Arisia where we can fight some stone golems. Now they are, honestly, I'd say the stone golems are easier than the bandit encounters because now that the bandits have like improved AI and mantras, I'm not going to lie, they're a little tough sometimes, especially if you're lagging. They can catch you off guard and you're just dead. With the stone golems, because they have like a, a multi-hit that you have to continuously like uh, spam parry, it, div it gives you a ton of uh, strength XP and a ton of weapon XP, which are the two things that we're going to be training next. So this is going to save us a ton of time. We're probably going to stay here until power 11 or 12, but it goes by really quick, and this is just an easy way to do it. Another thing is you're sort of out of the way of all of the other players on Arisia too. A lot of them are going to hang out in Lower Arisia, or they're going to go through the Acid Cave to fight the Duke. So, for the most part, you're kind of going to get, like, left alone. The only way people are going to come and mess with you is if they're a Void Walker, and, uh... I mean, there's really no easy way around that one. You kind of... You kind of just have to fight them. Once you get a little, like, more used to the game, Void Walkers... Somebody's Void Walking me right now, I just heard them. But once you get a little more used to the game, Void Walkers, they're not that big of a deal. They can, they can certainly be annoying at, like, a lower level, but... If you just really aren't that good at PvP, you don't want to deal with it, the best thing to do is run away. Once you get a certain distance away from Void Walkers, they essentially are despawned and get sent back to the Void Heart, which is where they spawn. So as long as you have like decent mobility, just run. If you can if you can at least hide from them, if you can at least get away and they don't know where you went, a lot of the times they'll just get so frustrated they'll freak the hell out and just give up. So this is it. This is the Upper Arisia or the Burning Stone Gardens. And these are the golems that you're going to want to fight. <coughs> so they do have a handful of moves. This is the multi-hit I'm talking about. And you'll see on my screen that I'm going to get uh, the like, XP prompt soon. Okay, maybe not. Alright, this golem's Loki selling the progression video. Come on. So yeah, so they have the stomp, the spin move, their laser beam that you just roll. They've got a, like, a f knockback, and then a down slam. But this is what I mean. They're super easy to fight, because they're so slow. And you just continuously- Are you serious? I sw I actually swear to god, that Archmage, like, changed the code, so that I just can't have fun on this game. So that's a Terrapod. They're not really that strong, but at a low level, it, I wouldn't recommend fighting them. Especially if you're not good at parrying. I'm low-key bad. Alright. Whatever. We're just gonna do some strength training here. Alright. Like, bro, what? what is even... Whatever. Alright, so I'm gonna save Heart's Response. Any card that gives you extra posture or revolves around parrying is really good. It's, uh, it seems like common sense, but just read the card. If it says something like, oh, 20% reduction to posture damage, that's a must-have. Like, even if it's just a common... It'd be best to have that. Uh, I'm going to take Reinforce. It did get nerfed a while ago. It doesn't like heal as much or buff as much, but it's still a good card to have. Especially since this build's going to be so much tankier than the other people that you'll be fighting. So the percent health, dam or percent health healing that you would get is much higher than what your opponent's going to get when you heal them at the same time. I still don't really understand why they uh fully changed that i mean i knew re i know reinforced healing was obnoxious but what was it like two or three percent and then like a one percent buff to damage and uh resistance i don't know it didn't seem that bad but i'm not like super like high tier meta player so maybe in really high chime it was obnoxious i just don't know 
But I'll show you guys here. The, I killed the golem there, and then the crab included. And you'll see, I'm probably going to get a whole level of experience here. It gives a ton for strength, and it gives just as much for weapon. But we're going to focus on strength right now. Okay. So it, it gave me, what was that, five? That, no. I can't do math. Dude, it's way too early. I don't even know what's happening. Chat, you know what I mean. I guess we'll put the rest in strength as we continue to power up here. It's a really... I don't know. I think this is one of the cooler areas in the map, so it's a shame that there's, like, no reason to come here. The only real reason is, uh, like, progression like this. But once you get a little, like, better at the game, more accustomed to how progression works, you really aren't gonna ever be doing this method. You either do Voidwalker and, uh, just sort of deal with how long it takes, or what a lot of people do is you just do Deep Bound. Deep bounds a really fast way to progress. The only problem is that at the early levels, it can be really difficult because you're like power two fighting the entire devs. Just imagine like Attack on Titan, but instead of being Aaron or like a main cast member, you're just some fu like you're just some no name. Your only role is to get eaten and uh, serve as uh, like motivation to the main characters down there. So. When you fight those ones over there at the gate, what can happen sometimes is they double up like this, which can be really obnoxious. Alright, you got me. Uh, what the hell? In this event, honestly, just run away. If you angle them the right way, I'm gonna see. I, I bet I can get that guy alone. They'll like climb up here. Alright, come on. Okay, and then you immediately run this way, so the other one falls off the branch, and we're set. So now I have this one by itself, and I can finish up what I was doing. Uh, did anybody see the Agamatsu video also about Conquest, about how it's quote-unquote not delayed? I, I don't know how I feel about that. Because it was pretty much, he was like, he interviewed Arch, or I don't know if he interviewed, he asked Arch about Conquest, and Arch was like, no, it wasn't delayed. But it took longer than expected, and some things came up, so it's coming out later than we predicted. Like, I, I don't know about you, man. I don't... Maybe I need to go back to, like, middle school English comprehension. But saying, no, it wasn't delayed. Just a couple things came up unexpectedly that caused it to come out weeks later. That sounds like it was delayed. I... I don't know where the disconnect is. No, yeah, we didn't delay it, but, like, yeah, a lot of unexpected shit came up, and now it's a couple weeks late. Okay, so it, it got delayed. No, no, it didn't get delayed, it didn't get delayed. Oh, okay. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but it seems odd. Seems a little odd. As long as we get Conquest at some point. It's disappointing that we didn't get it in December. <coughs> it's, it's a little ridiculous that we didn't even get it in January. But if we can at least get it in February, we'll be eating good. I noticed comments on my video and the comments on Agamatsu's video. A lot of people don't really know what's coming in the Conquest update. It's not just some, like, chime of conflict game mode. I think we're getting three or four oaths, probably a couple weapons... Probably a couple mantras. We are getting the hive origin that's gonna come with farming. Imagine it like uh, the verse two update almost, where they're revamping all kinds of stuff. They're adding all kinds of new progression methods, just in a much smaller scale. Obviously, this isn't gonna be the size of the verse two update, but we're gonna get a lot of stuff. It's not just like a new game mode for PvP, which will be definitely uh, it'll definitely be fun. I'm excited for it. I just wish it would come out sooner, you know? I mean, we, there was talks in like the content creator server of people like preparing for Conquest and getting video ideas ready in like late October. So when you hear co uh, content creators be like, oh my God, I can't believe it's taking so long. It's cause we've been talking about it so long maybe. And that is on us. It doesn't really change the fact that you know we all get it at the same time we're all playing the same game from a content creator perspective though it is a little more frustrating because 
I mean, we're constantly looking for ways to make content for the game, make videos, give to our fan base. So when you get this almost like uh, this golden goose, you're told like we're almost we're almost in the promised land. Just a few more weeks, and you're gonna have content for months, endless content to make. And then it just keeps getting pushed back further and further and further. And the general lack of communication. There, there is some ego to it, but especially when you're like a big content creator for the game, it can feel like, okay, I mean, I'm making all this content, I'm driving the players, like, I'm driving up the player base, I'm getting people excited about Deep Woken, I'm interacting with the community, I'm keeping it alive and vibrant, and I, like, I don't even get to know when to expect what's gonna keep my channel going, like, I don't even get to know when this massive update's coming out. But the lack of communication on the bigger updates is... It's always been an issue for Deep Woken, I'd say. It, it was the same thing initially with Verse 2, when we were all kind of sitting around like, alright, this is getting ridiculous, when's it coming out? And there was just radio silence up until the month that it came out. But I get it. I don't like it, but I get it. It's not easy, you know. Deep Woken is a massive game, so I know it's not easy to make updates that satisfy everyone in a timely manner, especially when the developers have their other projects. It's not like they just work on Deep Woken. I mean, it's a joke in the community now, but Raguzer and Archmage and K1, they all do work on Cursed Gear from time to time. They all have their own games, so... I don't know. It's not fair to expect them to only work on Deep Woken, but at the same time... Come on, man, like... This game is like 40 times bigger than any of your individual projects, and this is the one that gets what feels like the least love from a player's perspective. That's just absurd. But... But... Counter... You know, play in the other side of the argument to what I just said. Deep Woken does eat. We do eat with the weekly updates. I There are like no games off the top of my head that do weekly updates, let alone consistently good weekly updates. Even if the mantra that comes out is broken on release, like at least we're getting a fun mantra. I know recently they've really been focusing on like dual attunement stuff with uh, like Tempest Step or whatever, Tempest Winds. Uh, flash fire sweep iron tether so it's cool that we're getting like official hybrid mantras it's uh i don't know i don't know i can admit sometimes i sometimes i get like i hate unnecessarily i guess it's just really frustrating where it's like okay they can consistently give us good parts of content like we get little bits of really good content in the weekly so it's like i know that the team is capable of doing some really cool stuff so why why is it that the weeklies are consistently decent but when it comes to the big updates that everybody wants and is waiting on that's where they somehow seem to slack you know you would expect that the big updates get the like full priority and those come out on time and it, like it's everybody it's everything people dream of and then you get like the oh we were so we were so caught up working on conquest that we just didn't have enough time to finish the weekly update sorry guys like that to me that's what i would have expected to happen the opposite is true though it's more that like the weekly updates are always on time and they're always pretty solid and then the big updates seem to take the back burner of course i'm not a developer so i don't i'm not on the team i don't know what what their strategy is it's just a shame it's a shame i just want to play conquest i just want to be the hive origin bro this seems so cool i'm sick of void walker i'm sick of deep bound let me just go fucking live on hive uh oh dude i've got like a Ultra Instinct. I'm goaded. Oh! Okay. Maybe I don't. <coughs> oh, 
shit. Oh! Oh shit. Alright, I gotta get out of here. This is not looking good. Free me! Dude, I need one more investment point. Alright, we're good. We're good! That's another thing for like actually like really new players. If you're low, powering up gives you all of your lives back and it increases your health, posture, armor to full. Um probably shield breaker. Just because I know people are running shields, like the posture meta. And then just harsh response. So when I'm picking these like core attributes, so vitality, proficiency, iridictum. Unfortunately, just the way the game is, you're gonna have to run six vitality essentially every time. Vitality increases your health by 10 by every point, or your max health by 10. You just, you just have to have it. It's just so strong of an actual talent, especially since a lot of Deepwoken's combat is centered around like tankiness, about survivability and sustain. You just gotta do it. Iridition, they did just change Iridition, so that one's kind of up in the air. I always recommend going through Iridition though, just so you have that little extra tempo for venting. It's one of those things where it's just one of those core mechanics that you have to play around with. It's annoying that you have to have Vitality and you have to have Iridition, but that's it's just how the game works, you know? It's just the way it is. Maybe in the future it'll get tweaked a little bit. Again, they just touched up your addiction. Maybe they'll touch up how vitality works so that that tankiness and that that tempo gain is just inherently part of your build. Like the, the what you have now with six erudition would just become like a little closer to the base tempo regen. I don't know. I don't really like tempo at all. Reservoir was pretty... I don't know, people say Reservoir wasn't a good system, but simultaneously, it made sense, like... Okay, you have a lot of Charisma and Intelligence for your Mage build, okay, you have a lot of Reservoir and Aether, so you can use Mantras more often, and you can use larger, more powerful Mantras than someone who's like, a no attunement, with no points in Intelligence. Yeah, that, that made sense. There's definitely still differences between a Mage build and like a physical build now, but the gap is significantly smaller. Like, everybody's able to spam mantras in some way. It's at least, it's to varying levels of effectiveness. I don't know, I feel like if you're gonna go a physical build or a mage build, like, you can't have it both ways. You're either, like, super powerful, you can use a shit ton of mantras, but you're kind of a glass cannon. Or you're, like, a physical bruiser with, like, a heavy weapon or a sword, but your mantras don't do a lot of damage. It's kind of in this weird limbo where you can have it both ways. Mages get to be tanky, do a ton of damage, and have a lot of mobility. Uh, I don't know. That kind of encroaches into the build variety debate. Where, sure, it's almost like reskinning the same thing. Like, look at a no attunement build and a mage build. Like, they got to their finished product in a different way. And their play styles are drastically different, but ultimately, they both have the same level of tankiness, they're both doing the same level of damage, they're both playing about the same way. So it's like you're you're taking all of these different paths, but ultimately these builds, you know, the quote-unquote variety, they're all ending up in the same place doing the same thing. There's no real, like, key difference in play style or strengths and weaknesses. Maybe that's just me, and I'm overthinking it. I just think, from a balancing standpoint, if you're a mage build that can do a ton of damage and throw out mantras left and right, you shouldn't be tankier than somebody who's like 100 fortitude, you know? That, that just doesn't make sense. But hey, I'm not a developer. I'm just Deepwoken's top rambler. I just spew nonsense all day, every day. I'm never cooking, and I never know what I'm talking about, except for when my ideas consistently end up in weekly updates without credit. Then, then suddenly, 
maybe he was onto something. It's like the, it's the perpetual update loop where I complain about something, quote unquote, ramble. People tell me I'm not cooking, and then inevitably what I suggested ends up in the game. To no credit, and everybody praises them, and they're like, oh my god, this is so much better. Like, that's just the way it is. I recently made a whole video about wanting innate talents on armor to be really strong, and that's not something recent. I've been talking about that since the game came out, and you can find videos of me talking about it, like, as early as February or March of 2022, like not even six months after the game came out, I was talking about making armor pieces with innate talents. And then I say it again and suddenly, not even two days later in the Friday update, we get like the immortality helm and the miner's helm. No credit given to me. Or the banking update. I know a lot of people talked about the banking update, but my version of it, where you can put soulbound items in at the cost of knowledge. Or my idea at first was echoes, but you get the idea. You give up like knowledge or an echo and you get to transfer a soulbound weapon or item that's cross uh, slot. Like it doesn't matter what slot or life you're on. If it's in the bank, it's always gonna be there. That was that was my idea. That that what I suggested in that way stood out from what you would standard see, which is just let me put stuff in the bank or let us put notes in the bank. No credit, by the way, given to me. No credit given. All right. So we're going to start seeing these legendaries here for the million ton piercer. This is a key part of the build. It's going to allow us to uncap our pen. And now that the innate pen actually works, it's going to actually make a massive difference when we get to our end game weapons and our enchants. Um. Oh, shoot. I don't really know what I want to use. I'm going to burn Pack Mule. Uh, I'm going to burn Herbivore because I'm not vegetarian. I'm just going to fold here. I don't really need any of those. There's, yeah, there's no mantras for me to take right now. Steel scales. Okay, so we get extra armor, essentially. Heavy haul. Alright. So that's it. We're at power 12. Our two core attributes are done now. What we're going to work on next is agility, willpower, and medium. And then that is how we're going to sort of finish off the build. So I'm going to leave it at that. I think I'm going to update this daily so part two is going to be tomorrow where we're going to finish flushing out the build and getting to power 20 and then in the final part is when we're going to min max the build using floor two i'll sort of give you guys the best rundown on like how you can do that solo or as a duo the kind of talents you're looking for the kind of enchants and armor you should be using uh a little more in depth on how to create the perfect min max like post power 20 and yeah, i'll see you then peace out